Hi guys, Sci-Fi Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a 2020 American psychological thriller movie called Do Not Reply. The movie begins with Chelsea, a young, introverted teenage girl, texting with her best friend, Mia. Mia excitedly tells her about her close acquaintance with a boy named Dylan and presumes that they will be dating soon. Chelsea then reluctantly goes to school with her famous cheerleader sister, Christina. Before leaving, Christina notices Chelsea receives a text from an anonymous number, presumably a boy, although Chelsea does not know who it is. Arriving at school, Chelsea meets with Mia who tells her that their usual movie night will be relocated to Dylan's house so she can have an opportunity to make out with Dylan. However, Dylan also invites his best friend, Seth, with the intention of setting him up with Chelsea while he and Mia make out. During the movie night, Chelsea awkwardly interacts with Seth who clearly shows interest in her, and even aggressively kisses her. Chelsea is uncomfortable with the situation and quickly leaves. The next day, Mia asks Chelsea what happened last night. Chelsea admits that she did not feel comfortable, but Mia disregards her feelings and is too busy cuddling with Dylan. Mia receives another text from the same anonymous number. Feeling left alone, she replies to the number, and they engage in a conversation. Unfortunately, school security confiscates her phone. Chelsea's mother has to pick it up from school and she punishes Chelsea by not letting her have her phone for one month. Mia, being a supportive friend, sneaks to her house to lend her a phone. Chelsea thanks her although she admits she is disappointed by Mia always being preoccupied with Dylan. Chelsea restores her chats and continues texting with the unknown number. He asks if Chelsea is a cheerleader, to which she answers yes. He then asks her to send him pictures of her in a cheerleader costume. Chelsea goes to Christina's room after making sure she is not home and borrows her cheerleader costume, takes photos with it, and sends it to him. Sometime later, the boy asks to have a video call with her, but his camera is blurry. He admits that his phone is broken. Three weeks later, after intense communication, Chelsea agrees to meet the boy, named Brad, on a date. They agree to attend a Halloween party where they could each take a bus too. Chelsea hears someone shouting Brad's name in the background, then Brad tells her it is his sister, Sadie. Halloween day comes. Chelsea admits that she will just stay home and pass candy to the kids. After her mother and sister leave, Chelsea goes out to the party and finally meets Brad, whose face is covered with a helmet so she cannot see it clearly. Brad offers her an alcoholic drink, and they drink until she is wasted. Brad guides her to his car, ties her wrists, and takes her to his place. Chelsea wakes up in a filthy basement. Brad comes sometimes to give her food and water and begins telling her that her name is now Sadie, not Chelsea. If she does not obey him, he tortures her. After a while, Chelsea decides to play along with anything Brad wants. Another girl in cheerleader costume, introducing herself also as Sadie, comes to free her on behalf of Brad. Chelsea uses the opportunity to escape but finds herself out of the filthy basement of a heavily locked pastel house. The other Sadie, whose real name is Megan, warns her to not get herself into trouble. She tells Chelsea to cover her tracks by raking the rug in the living room. She then introduces Chelsea to another girl, also nicknamed Sadie, wearing a cheerleader outfit and blonde hair, but her real name is Heather. Megan helps clean Chelsea's body and outfit, demands her to dye her hair blonde too, and prepares her for dinner. While Chelsea is brushing her teeth, she hears a sound and discovers in a bedroom that another girl fell from her bed. She has a bad injury on her thigh, but when Chelsea offers to help her, she dismisses her. Meanwhile, Brad is playing with his virtual reality gears and practices some movements with a knife then heads down for dinner. On the way down, he hallucinates seeing a girl in front of the mirror while teasing him. In the kitchen, Brad finds Heather making a cake for dinner and harasses her. Heather goes to the bathroom and meets with Chelsea, but she tells her bruises as having a kitchen accident and nothing to worry about. Chelsea, Heather, and Megan then have their outside time which is actually just an opportunity to feel the outside world through Brad's VR device for a few minutes. Heather then tells Chelsea to spare some of her food during dinner for the injured girl. Chelsea then learns the girl was injured by Brad because she was trying to escape. During dinner, Chelsea cries because she misses her family, then Brad talks about how Chelsea's family was looking for her. However, he forbids her to talk about her family again, as Brad and the girls are her family now. After the dinner, Chelsea learns that Heather is leaving the house because she has been a good and obedient girl for three years. Before her release, she has to do the last performance in front of Brad. Chelsea goes to the injured girl's room to give her food. She learns that the girl's name is Tina, a name she recognizes from missing person news on TV. Meanwhile, Brad asks Heather to perform a cheerleader dance in his basement while he records it using his VR gear. 
However, before she begins, Brad begins hallucinating again. This time, he remembers when he was little and had to reluctantly welcome his baby sister into the family. Sadie received more love and attention from his parents than him, causing him to develop hate towards her. Back to his senses, he secretly wields a knife, then immediately attacks and stabs Heather until she dies. He shouts that he is willing to watch Sadie die over and over again. Turns out Brad kidnaps cheerleader girls and tortures them because he likes to release his anger to his sister towards these girls. Megan communicates with Chelsea through a hole in her bedroom wall, hidden behind the nightstand. Megan is so brainwashed that she thinks Brad loves her and presumes that Chelsea is her competitor for winning Brad's heart. She also thinks that Tina is jealous of her close relationship with Brad, thus trying to escape. Chelsea does not understand why being chosen by Brad is a good thing, then tries to infuriate Brad by misbehaving at dinner. However, Brad also scolds Megan for smiling when he throws his anger at Chelsea. Chelsea goes to Tina's room again. Tina explains that she tried to escape because she was pregnant. After being brutally tortured by Brad, she lost her baby and is now bedridden. She wants to end her suffering by overdosing herself with Brad's painkillers, which she knows are inside Brad's nightstand. She asks Chelsea to help retrieve the painkillers in exchange for anything she knows about Brad and how to possibly escape. She knows when Brad is mowing his lawn and teaches Chelsea how to get out of their locked bedroom. Chelsea gets the painkillers and frantically rakes the rug to cover her tracks, but she is too clumsy to let the pills fall onto the floor. Fortunately, she cleans the mess and is back in her room just as Brad finishes mowing. However, Brad discovers Tina's unlocked bedroom door and accuses her of trying to escape again. He suffocates her using a pillow. Chelsea observes them from the connecting bathroom, and surprisingly she asks Brad to do it. Tina is glad that Chelsea keeps her promise to end her suffering, however, Brad is amused by Chelsea's act and thinks she can be his partner in crime. After Tina is no longer breathing, Chelsea is trembling because of the adrenaline rush. Brad calms her down and shows her his videos of him torturing and murdering Heather in his VR gear. Chelsea seems to enjoy the sadistic scenes, then Brad plans to film another video with Megan as the victim. He assumes he can kill Megan together with Chelsea. During that day's dinner, Brad clearly favors Chelsea over Megan, making the latter jealous. Brad instructs Megan to help him with testing a new VR gear after dinner. In their bedrooms, Chelsea warns Megan that Brad wants to kill her, even showing Tina's body to prove to her that Brad can truly kill someone. Megan still does not believe that Brad could do that, then reports Chelsea to Brad. Brad is furious and locks both girls in their rooms, but Chelsea would not give up. She escapes from her room, frees Megan, and runs with her to Brad's room where she could show her his VR gear which contains Heather's torture video. However, Brad catches them, locks Megan in her room, and drags Chelsea to the basement. He intends to torture Chelsea, but she puts up a fight. Megan frantically escapes from her room and gets herself a knife before heading down to the basement to help Chelsea. They both beat Brad and stab him in the back, then frantically grab his keys and run upstairs. Brad manages to muster enough strength to get out of the basement and goes after the girls who are opening the front door, but Chelsea finally defeats him by smashing his head with his VR helmet. Finally, out of the house, Chelsea and Megan approach passersby and ask for help. Chelsea contacts her family to inform them that she is now safe, however, she is reluctant to talk about her traumatic experience with a therapist that her parents assigned. Meanwhile, Brad hallucinates in prison, seeing Sadie coming after him with a knife. Sometime later, Two 13-year-old girls are scrolling through social media, talking about 17-year-old boys they would like to date online, then they forfeit their age to 16 and one of them gets a chat from a boy. The chat format is like what Chelsea received from Brad, indicating many online predators are still lurking on the internet. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.